All right, so I believe this is gonna be the final lecture in our series of Matplotlib and what a journey it's been. So we have covered a vast amount of data inside of the Matplotlib module, quite a lot than I would have expected, but we did discuss um, a, quite a lot of important things. So we started off with the basics of line plots, we moved on to bar plots and then pie charts. Then we sort of moved on to the 3D area of expertise where we talked about um, 3D line plots, then scatter plots, bar plots, and finally, um, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about wireframes. So again, it has been a fantastic journey with Matplotlib. Um, let's go ahead and quickly finish off this last lecture, and then if you have any questions whatsoever, please definitely ask. Um, all right, so I'm going to delete all of this stuff, except for that subplot, and we're going to start from here. So what I want to do is I want to first get my X and Y coordinates. However, you're probably realizing that there must be an easier way to get my coordinates rather than having to input my data every single time. So yes, there is. Um, there is a module, again, access 3D that we've imported, and there's a function inside of it that enables us to actually, um, it, it generates us random X, Y, and Z um, uh, data. Okay. So all we have to do is say chart is equal to, or actually, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So we already have that line there. We already have that line. X comma Y comma Z is equal to axis 3d dot get test data. And trust me guys, this saves us a ton of time while creating this wireframe. So we have to pass in a parameter and the parameter is basically, you can call it Delta for now. And Delta here, um, I'll explain it, but Delta basically is the time taken to compute um, a line. Okay. You're not going to understand it right now, but as soon as we start visualizing it um, and test out with some different test cases, you'll understand what's happening. So as soon as we get the test data, there's not much to it now. All we have to do is say chart.plot and then wireframe x comma y comma z and then there's two other variables that you probably should know r stride equal to 10 and c stride equal to 10. so r stride and c stride basically are um how many lines are computer i guess you could say or um something along those lines like again i will be showing you visually so just go ahead save this in f5 basically delta the 0 0.05 is how many how how fast these lines are computed and R stride and C stride are basically the time taken to or the distance. I'm, I'm not completely sure about the R stride and C stride. I'll definitely check it out. But as you can see, this is our um, wireframe. Okay. Right now, as you can see, we have these lines. These lines do look good. But what if we could make it better? Okay. So these, these lines look great. Um, as you can see, every time we move it, uh, it's getting generated and stuff. So try changing the, 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 the delta over here, let's say to 1.05. Okay, save this F5. And you're gonna notice a vast difference on or in how our um, plot looks. It looks like a simple straight line. There's there, I mean, you can see the point where it is curving, but it's not at all fluid. It's not curvy, it's straight and pointy, which we don't like. So this immediately tells you what the delta does. It changes the time taken for the lines to be, um, what would you say that the lines be computed now with the R stride and C stride try changing it to maybe two. Okay. Or let's do one. Let's do one. Let's do one and see what happens. So by doing it to one and F five and don't do this in a slow machine because it will definitely slow down your machine. Um, changing this again, it's quite slow, but see how much more detailed it is. Okay. The R stride and the C stride basically are the number of lines being generated per space. Uh, there is a better definition for it, but that's the best definition I know of right now. Um, the smaller the R stride and the C stride, the more lines that are generated. Uh, again, it is quite hefty on your processor and stuff. So if you have a slow machine, don't try this out, but you can definitely see how much more detailed it is. Okay. Um, a good one to put it would be at like maybe five, but just for comparison, put this at 10 and put C stride at one and you'll notice how the lines are so you can see the detailed R stride or I'm sorry let me move this up for you guys you can see the detailed C stride lines um, those are the lines going to the which way are they going they're going to the right 
but you can see how spread apart the C stride lines are and you can see those thick lines, right? So this is the difference between C stride and R stride. Um, the smaller the C stride, the R stride, the more detailed your wireframe will be. Again, this is the last lecture in our matplotlib um, tutorial. So please, if you have any questions whatsoever, um, definitely do ask. I hope you've had a lot of fun um, learning about matplotlib. I know I have, it's been quite a journey actually. Um, I learned quite a lot of new things while creating this tutorial. So hopefully you had fun and I'll see you in the next section.